All right, we roll credits on Fierce Challenger Series 12. Immediate reaction after the fact. Blake Arulian, Zach Partridge. Zach, right when we were walking over here, I said to my, I said to you, I think that might be the best Challenger Series of all time. I, I, all finishes, a majority draw, just one of the greatest shows we've ever had. Uh, yeah, full-on success, basically sold-out crowd, place was packed. <laughs> we were just talking about how it's, there was literally so many people here. The AC couldn't keep up with it. Everybody was dying, needed a drink. It was fun. The energy was good all night. Just finish after finish, and then, obvious, yeah, like you said, it finished with a majority draw that was probably one of the best fights we've ever seen. The question now comes is, is Nasir Davis, Jackson DeGray, Hamza Salim, <laughs> Jerome Hatch, Amon Garcia, Abraham Ayala. I mean, when it comes to the end of the year, Zach, we're going to we're gonna get our heads cut off if we don't pick any six of these guys. I mean, all of them deserve it. It's incredible. I mean, yeah. It... <sighs> we'll talk about it. <laughs> Kane Iman taking care of business versus Carson Newman in the amateur heavyweight kickboxing bout. I was talking to Eric Iman after the fact, and he was so proud of him. It was great to see them in the cage together. And Kane Iman looks as legit as anyone. Just really like, man, when he lands, he lands with power. A lot of stuff, and it's a lot like his dad, you know? Um, very similar style. I was just blown away by Carson's toughness in that fight. I mean, dude, he just refused to stop. And there was times where, I mean, he was hurt on his feet and he just kept pressing forward, shoving Kane back, trying to create space, trying to land his own shots. Um, just showed a ton of heart, a ton of, ton of toughness. And um, I am now more convinced than ever that his first fight was stopped too early because he's a dog. And, you know, he just, and he showed that, man, he'll go out there and compete with anybody. Um, yeah, uh, Kane, Kane delivered. Congrats to him on a kickboxing fight. Um, I would love to see him in an M MMA fight next. Some smaller gloves for the heavyweight would be fun. Yeah, Carson Newman looked incredible as well. So much better than, obviously, how that first one went. Tayson Royer gets the job done versus Ben Evans in speedy fashion. When we saw Ben Evans last time, it went to a decision. Or, I'm trying to remember, I believe it went to a decision. This time, Tayson Royer gets it done early in the first round. Uh, Taysen looked fantastic. Didn't look like a debuter to me. I mean, that kid was composed, collected, and measured. Um, that was one thing. Even Ben, I went into the cage after him. Ben was just like, whoa. And he's been in there with a couple really tough guys, and he clearly had not been hit like that before. And uh, that was a very impressive performance by Taysen Royer. Just a big indicator that Ben Evans, I think he has a ton of heart. I think he has ability. Um, he has intangibles that you can't teach with that heart toughness and, and just being out there, going out there and wanting to compete. I just, I'd love to see him get in a gym and I'd love to see him, you know, I know he goes into a GEMA when he can, but I, I would love to see him in there regularly, get on that fight team, surround himself with those good coaches and fighters in that environment. And I think he's somebody that could turn his record around. Also fighting in a more correct weight class. I love that he's just down to fight at any weight class, but my goodness, he's a flyweight fighting 145ers. Yeah. That's the reality of it. And uh, But Taysen's really fun, and I look forward to having him back on the show. Speaking of heavy hands, Nick Lavulo, what a finish that was. And I also just want to mention this. I've been calling fights for Fierce for two and a half years. I have the best job in the whole world. I'm super grateful for it. In my time, I cannot recall a fighter over the age of 40 getting their hand raised, barring Eric Iman. Nick Lavulo is the second now. Man, I, I mean, I, I told you, I'm like, you watch Nick. Like, I mean, hitting, hitting pads, the thing with hitting pads is pads don't hit back. But um, when you go out there and throw with intent to hurt people, just like when you're hitting pads, um, again, somebody that's willing to hit back, you get that type of a result. When I mean, we talked about the type of stud that Trace Thompson is and his grappling and his wrestling, and if he could get to those grappling exchanges, it could have been a totally different story for Nick. Nick came in, did exactly what he needed to do, execute him, execute, it executed his game plan, touched him hard, touched him early. And, you know, before we know it, Trace is working a single leg on Dave Selyestead um, as he's trying to figure out what the heck just hit him. And that was Nick Lavulo, super impressive performance. And I think just a good growth and learning experience for Trace. Tables turned in a very dramatic middleweight bout between Quinton Henderson and Brandon Bozeman from seeming to be the one not getting his hand raised. He's able 
to switch things up and get the win via guillotine almost the exact same way that he lost his debut yeah ironically right um you know uh Quentin was winning that first round looking very good and you know I train with Brandon and I know he, I know he's tough he's stubborn he's hard to get finishes on and stuff like that I just think that was a product too of Quentin just here's the thing with Quentin him and his brother are dogs and they will come to fight and they lay it all on the line and they give 100% and they are so fun and they are favorites here at Fierce become both of them very quickly uh fan favorites they train together in their basement. Got to get these guys in a gym with some coaching and with some more bodies. Um, Quentin's brother tore his ACL. Um, John in this camp helping him. So, I mean, Quentin was just <laughs> doing a lot of it on his own. And I thought looked incredible considering it's like the, what they show with their limited training, get them in a real gym. I think they both become monsters. Um, but Brandon, he is in a room full of killers, excluding me. And uh, he just <laughs> and uh, and he showed his toughness in his grip. He is tough. And he took a bad situation, got into an advantageous one. You know, got got the nice little got the nice little uh, ripped me off ninja choke there. And uh, everyone for him. from one hit was doing that tonight. Dude, by the way. Ammons was so close, so close, but. Sam Odekirk taking care of business as well at 115 pounds versus Mally Rahimi in a solid debut for her out of Lobato MMA. Well, I would say this um, with uh, Sam. She um, she did some really nice things. She looked a little hesitant a little uh, at the very beginning, but once she got into her flow of things and once she started letting those hands go, she threw a laser beam of a right hand, hurt Mally, uh, jumped on her back. I thought I thought I'd I'm, I wasn't sure why it was stopped when it was stopped. Uh, Mally, I don't think she was out. I don't believe that. I didn't see a tap. I don't think she did tap. Um, so that that's always tough, but don't take away anything from Sam. She came in and did her job. Um, just it's tough when Mally, you know, the skid that she's been on, to not have a definitive finish that way. It's like extra frustrating for her. So kind of interesting to see what happens with her next. Um, I'm interested to see what happens with Sam next. Very interested in that one. You know, if it weren't for the main event, this 100% has to be the fight of the night. One of the greatest fights I have ever seen <laughs> finishes off with Dante Morales getting his hand raised. Zach, he hadn't really been tested in his first two fights. This time, he had his back against the wall and answered back in the biggest way he possibly could. Mateo is a savage, fighting a majority part of that fight. Last part of that first round without his mouth guard. Did it hesitate? Didn't hesitate. 18 yeah. year old kid stood in there, bit down on his teeth and was just chucking leather back. Uh, just a little pit bull in there. Dante, like you said, facing some adversity, facing somebody that just wouldn't get out of his face. And dude, at 20 years old, I believe. Uh, yes, yes. I. Dante, I, don't, I don't have my, my board in front of me. But David yeah. Kidd said it best as he was leaving. Dante is a blue chip prospect. He is His upside is incredible at 125. Um, I think Mateo, the sky is the limit with that kid. I mean, he probably doesn't fight somebody as tough as Dante yeah. for four or five fights at this point, you yeah. know? And it's like, so it's like, man, to get that experience under your belt as your first fight in a loss and he'll be back, whew. Sometimes you wonder if a fighter has that next gear, right? Like, we yeah. saw it with Dante. We saw it with Mateo. It was shifted as early as the yeah. fight could be. All action from them from bell to bell. Micah Murdoch gets it done versus James Prescott. Micah Murdoch fired up after the win as well. Yeah, I mean, Jimmy and, and Micah, I, they were so similarly matched. Kind of like wrestling. I mean, Jimmy comes out and throws a nuke of a left that could have decapitated someone. Just just misses and uh and micah capitalized did some good things and and got the sneaky what like reverse triangle is that officially what it was or was it a little uh americana type little, thing? i couldn't see little behind the scenes i was trying to put out a fire on the production side with our oh. team i was turned the other way looked the other way and micah murdoch was finishing some submission andrew boquette and jason laporte really picked up the pieces on that one so okay. i actually don't know i was got the nice submission win. i think it was like a reverse triangle because i think jimmy kind of went out Oh, really? Yeah. So that's what I think it was. I think there was a little Americana in there. Um, but it, slick move. Good for Micah. Um, we'll see. 
we'll see how fast we see him again. Derek Jorgensen, three wins in a row for him. He went from being a an upside down record back in March of last year to now he has fired off four of his last five and has a beautiful four and two record. Yeah, I mean, and one of the one of the things with him is um, just game as can be, right? Um, Zach, the vet, uh, miscalculates his weight cut, misses weight. Derek says, whatever, we're going to fight no matter what, and then uh, comes in and performs, gets this. Zach was doing very well, gets on top, uh, was doing some things. Derek finds the arm, takes it home. Um, you know, it's tough. Like, Zach's losing fights, but he's losing fights to quality opponents, you know, and he's fighting tough guys because that's where his record is, and he's a tough guy. And it's just, um, you know, back to the drawing board again. Um, again, he's surrounded by great people where I think that he can right those wrongs. Um, at the same time, Derek pretty much just put himself in the title picture. Uh, you I was going to ask you that, yeah. I mean, Ricky Mamone is fighting, defending his title before the end of the year. And then after that, uh, you know, there's there, there's going to be opportunities. Um Derek against, you know, depending on what Ricky does. Um, yeah, I mean, Derek, Derek's kind of putting himself into that title picture, a number one contender fight next, or maybe even a title fight next. Jacob Mendenhall besting Mason Moyes in what was a very competitive fight. Mason Moyes getting the first round from what I can remember, second round was all Mendenhall. Yeah, um, it was, yeah, it was a, yeah, I just, I think Mason, um, I think it's just one of those things where it's like, you know, Activity matters in MMA. And, uh, you know, that was Mason's first fight in a long time. And um, he thought he was done, got the fire back. One thing I loved about it, Mason said, he, you know, I'll, I'll be back. And I, I hope he is. That's good to hear. Because he looked phenomenal in the first round. Second round, I don't know if he just adrenaline dumped, whatever. I mean, he trained really hard. I mean, if people knew how much weight he's lost since the beginning of this year, he weighed in at 243, 243 yesterday. Yeah. yesterday. I mean, he was, he was north of 300 pounds earlier this year really? and I mean he worked his butt off to get ready for this fight I think he was really excited I think he was really ready um Jake uh you know did all the right things to survive the first round turned the momentum in the second and just kept it and uh hats off to Jake sounds like his uh local promotion maybe a title fight is in his near Good future um but one thing was for certain you know I would be very interested in bringing him back in the title picture at Fierce FC as well I would really look forward to that as well. Brendan Myers, Lance Regimball. We said it. Lance Regimball is one of the top talents in the entire state of Montana and not someone to be slept on by any means. A competitive fight, again, similar to the Mendenhall Moyes fight. Myers, round one. Regimball, round two. Regimball comes out on top. We, um, yeah, I thought that, I thought that he. <sighs> I thought Brendan was in complete control of that fight. He got the early takedown in the first round, but when he couldn't get it in the second, something just kind of happened, you could see, and I don't think it was physical, and Lance capitalized. And um, Lance's ability to stay composed in the first round and get back to his game plan in the second, that is a trait that it can be the difference sometimes between somebody you know, being a champion and not. And the fact, overcoming the adversity and then making sure that the right adjustments are made between round one and two to keep the fight where he wanted it. And he did some good things. Um, apparently he has another fight already lined up. Good for him. But then right after that, we told him, and they agreed, we want him back at Fierce FC to defend that title. So with what transpired tonight as well, we will see who he will be defending that title against. That division is stacked. I already had a couple of conversations with a few people. Might have suggested stuff a little bit on the post-fight show as well on the broadcast, but we, we don't make fights the night of the no, fights. no, 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 no. <laughs> and and I don't make a white line. <laughs> I don't make any fights at all. I just look at things and I go, hey, does this puzzle piece work here? And then I maybe have a conversation with you about it later. All right, David Kim, Nate Reinhardt. David Kim submits Reinhardt in the first round and was obviously fired up considering that only fought once in the last 18 months, and the way that he lost his first title when he was much younger in his MMA career Dude. to now get it done, he, phenomenal. He jumped on Nate's back so fast, I went, 
This looks eerily familiar. <laughs> I told him that. I literally went up to him after the fight and I said, I was worried that you might blow your wad again like you have done in the past, primarily Edgar Sort, though, when you lost your only fight you've ever fought. The, your only title fight you've ever fought. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, that's what I mean. But the, uh, the, the, the best part about that fight for me was him running over and screaming in Joel Haro's face, I'm the best band of weight in Utah. And Joel's like, does he know who he just said that to? It was the best. And Joel, you know, he's a, he's a good sport about it. I think he totally understood what David meant. And David came back and said, I didn't even know what I said. And he came, <laughs> and he came back and told told Joel, he goes, I mean the best Amy band of weight in Utah. Oh, I'm man. sorry. Oh, so man. it was that was a really fun, funny moment. Um yeah, David, uh, you know, uh, that was good. I Nate's a guy, too, that's just like, I mean, that was a step up in competition for him. I think he was ready for it. Um, it was just, it, it just, it, these things just happen in MMA. They just, they just happen, and Nate's the type of guy that I truly believe will be better from that result. Um, we've seen nothing but growth from Nate. So um, I hope to, you know, I'll see, I'm sure – Nate will get back to the drawing board, and you know, I, I, we like Nate. We're a fan of Nate. That's why he keeps getting opportunities, and he got this one. And I'm sure more opportunities in his MMA career are to come. Hard fight to watch for me personally. Love David. Love Nate. Both of them great yeah. guys in their own right. Super, super fun one at 135 pounds. Eleven incredible fights, Zach. Heavily shaded by what was another fight of the year contender, Abraham Ayala, Amon Garcia. Delivered beyond measure, I think, of any main event I have seen in quite some time. I mean, I might be biased, but I think Ammon's one of the best prospects in Utah. I mean, I don't think I'm biased. I no, think most, no, I, I think, think a lot of people. I agree. think most people understand that. And for him to fight a guy like Abe for his pro debut, I think showed that. Um, Abe is a seasoned person that's been training. I mean, Abe's been. Abe was, Abe was halfway through his amateur career before Ammon was even started training. And Ammon was the better fighter in that fight, I believe, the more skilled fighter um, in a lot of ways. But I think Abe's veteran ability to stay in the fight and stay composed, he being hurt multiple times, being rocked multiple times, and and then it's what fighters do that keep getting hurt, and but they know that their opponent's tired as they get the big takedown when they know they don't have the energy to get back up. And broken hand and things like that veteran savvy move by abe um i hate i hate 10 8 rounds without more damage or submission attempts or more moments of maybe almost finish the fight it was just a lot of control time um me and the athletic commission uh had a little disagreement about that at the end of the fight and that's fine i had a personal bias and i have one of those in my own record a draw that yeah. was very similar won the first two rounds pretty clearly and then a guy laid on me for the third round doing very minimal damage but he did a lot of control and he did a lot of it for most of the round and Ammon just didn't get enough offense off in that round and um is what it is Ammon obviously injured uh broke his hand in the first round love to see him back and I, i'm not i'm not kidding um i, I want to see it again when Ammon's ready to go i don't know if it's the first fight back but and I don't know where Abe's going, but I want to see that fight again. And I want to see that fight finished. I love Ammon Garcia. Getting to meet Abraham this week has been such an absolute a good pleasure. He's such a good dude. Coolest he really was. guy. Ammon was making me laugh till my stomach hurt it way <laughs> all day yesterday. Such a fun matchup and such an incredible card. The full card will be up in a couple of days. Individual fights will be up later this week. Zach we got to turn this thing right around. I will see you in just less than a week as we head over to Bear Lake for Fierce Challenger Series 13, another stacked card once again. Hopefully it can live up to what we had here tonight. I mean, I don't know how I can live up to that, <laughs> but if anybody can do it, it's it's what we got going on. we got some announcements coming out, some matchup changes. Uh, we'll get some contracts out, let everybody know what's going on. But Bear Lake, everybody that you, you need and want to see up on that card is still intact. So, uh I'm, I'm excited to go up there. Oh, oh, <laughs> we have a huge announcement that's coming in the next couple of weeks. We have oh. some big things to announce before the end of the year. So stay tuned. Okay, now we can go to bed. All right. Good night, everybody. Thank you so much.